Welcome, aftermarket pros, to For the Record. Now, listen to a slice of wisdom, a concept, a sentiment, and maybe even a rant from one of your industry colleagues. For the Record. Hello, friend. Carm Capriato here. This is the podcast where you come to get aftermarket insights, personal stories, lighthearted commentary, and educational workshops all wrapped up into our three podcast shows, Remarkable Results Radio, the Town Hall Academy, and this one, For the Record. Hang around and hear our frequent contributor, Matt Fonslow, talk about helping shops. Hey, For the Record is proud to partner with Flex Check Auto. Now, let's talk DVI. Have you accepted that digital vehicle inspections can revolutionize your business, but uh, you don't know where to start? Well, Flex Check Auto provides a high value to your shop. It delivers you a big ROI. You'll find the process-driven, intuitive platform design increases efficiency shop-wide and provides clear and transparent information to your customer, therefore increasing ARO. Now, if you're a process-driven company, you'll love FlexCheck Auto because we think like you. Designed by a shop owner for shop owners. FlexCheck Auto's fully customizable DVI platform, transparency, flexibility, and a short learning curve combined to provide excellent, excellent value. Now let FlexCheck Auto guide you, your techs, your shop, and your customers into a better way of doing business. Go to FlexCheckAuto.com and learn more. Hey, don't forget, we've separated the podcasts into their own subscription, and you need to subscribe individually to Town Hall Academy and to For the Record, so you don't miss one episode. Find them on the listening app you're probably using right now, and and you don't want to miss one episode, so please find a few moments to do this, and I, I thank you. And my guest today is Matt Fonslow, a frequent contributor to For the Record. Matt always does his homework and brings a smart point of view to all the podcasts. Matt's well known for asking the aftermarket to take lessons from professional wrestling. You can hear that in For the Record 50. And also the ingenious Star Trek Kobayashi Maru For the Record. It links how you pay your tax. That's For the Record 77. Now, in this episode, Matt wonders how your talent and equipment can help build co-opetition. The views and opinions expressed are those of my guest and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the author, sponsors, associates, or affiliates of LSTN Media, LLC. Hey, you can find the show notes and even listen online at remarkableresults.biz slash F080. Hello, this is Matt Fonzel from Riverside Automotive in Red Wing, Minnesota, shop manager, and I'm doing a For the Record, and I've invited Carm to join me. Oh, maybe because you're in the studio here at Apex, and, and, I, and I didn't get anywhere else, but you know, I'm here. I, I couldn't get him to leave All right, and okay. leave the studio to me and let me just go. All by yourself? All, the Bouncing off the wall? Some really good stuff would probably be uttered then, right? <laughs> What's on your mind, man? Not a whole lot. Uh, talking about helping shops? Yeah. Um, yeah, we were. We've been, we've been kind of just, just talking off to the side. I said, let's get in the studio and put this on tape. Yep. Yep. Or marketing uh, to local shops. Yeah. That, uh, we do a lot of that where we acquire uh, some new equipment, maybe a scan tool, OE scan tool, or some sort of a, a press. We've done that. We've got a big, uh, large press for pressing out suspension parts, bearings. And when we get this stuff, we put together a three-fold flyer. And uh, I just build it in Microsoft Microsoft Publisher. Yeah. And I go around from shop to shop, and I just say, "Hey guys, you know, we can help you. You got a, a you know, I bought this OE scan tool. I can do some programming. I can do some uh, mobilizer functions, whatnot, testing. You run into a hair puller, you know, don't hesitate to call. I'll, you know, glad to help out. I think we can, you know." solve a problem for you here and there. And it, I love it. So what's the result? Do, do people take you up on it? Actually, yeah, a yeah. lot. Uh, we get a lot of, most of my programming comes from other repair shops. Okay, so 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 here's the deal. You're not the only one doing this in the, in the whole industry. There's a, no. lot of, a lot of people sharing amongst their localized networks. Hey, I got this tool if you need it. Yep, some brick and mortar shops and then, you know, the mobile techs, that's, they're based heavily in that. But you don't loan the tool, you do the no. job for them. Yes. They come to your place. Either come to our shop or I go to their shop. Okay. Um, and another, kind of another foot in the door has been they'll run into an issue. Forget about the threefold flyer. Forget about knowing I might have this, that, or other. They might even assume I have something. Calling up, hey, Matt, 
uh, I'm struggling on this vehicle. I've done this, I've done this, I've looked at this. And I think sometimes we're taught then to try to get the vehicle in the door. But I will, honestly, I try to help them out. I, I try to walk them through a process step by step. This is what I would do. Totally free advice. Right. Because hopefully it pays it forward. You know, they'll help somebody else or really hopefully someday if I need it, they'll help me. You right. know, the shop needs this piece of equipment to do this job. Do you have it? Yeah. You come and get it. That would be, that would be so great. So I re- really try to help them out. Here's how, here's how I will approach this problem. Or this is the tool I would use to do that. Inevitably, many times, it ends up at the shop. They, they bring it, they either send the customer or they bring it themselves and we do the work for the shop or for the customer. You treat this customer, if you will, kind of hands off because they're the, the other shop's customer. Yep, if the shop brings it to us, the shop themselves, That's fine. the they customer don't... may never even know I've touched the vehicle and right. I'm totally fine with that. If the customer is sent to us, then we do treat them as the other shop's customer, right? Okay. Right. But we, I mean, we try to treat them really well, really good too. We yeah. want them to have a good experience yeah. and at least keep us in mind. You know, we're probably not going to pull them 100% from the other shop. And the, I don't want to say that's even a fundamental goal. It's, you know, we're going to hopefully get hired to do a job and do it well. And maybe they'll go say some nice things about us to someone else, or mm-hmm. they're going to bring a certain type of problem to their regular repair shop. And this other type of problem, maybe they'll bring it to us or refer a friend or family member or coworker with a certain type of problem to us. You know, it gets me thinking. Um, you're, you, obviously, you, you do so much in the industry. And in fact, I know you're here. You're at SEMA, right? It, uh, Apex, uh, technically. A- yep. Apex at the, at the Pico booth. And I yep. know you travel the country and do a lot of Pico training. When I think about what you just told me about people calling you for support, does it surprise you of the gap that people have in their training and their knowledge of solving the issue? Or is it they've done the best that they could and these are huge challenges? Or are they, are they just really basic 101 stuff? Yeah, it, it varies. Some of it is very 101. Okay. Unfortunately. And you're surprised that you're getting it. I'm surprised that the cars, yeah, that the shop or tech struggled with it. Okay. Not always, but a lot of times I'm, I'm a little surprised, if not more or less disappointed, not in the tech, but maybe in the shop, maybe in the trade itself, that this is what we have out there. Okay. Other Ga- times, gaps of knowledge. Serious gaps of knowledge. That comes from training. Yep. And sometimes I'm very sympathetic. A lot of times it's a very young tech thrust into a situation where they're really, the odds are stacked against them. Like, why would they figure this out? Why would the shop owner or manager expect them to figure this out? And so, you know, and sometimes it's a, a equipment, lack of equipment, the proper equipment or up, updated equipment or updated information or access to information. There's all these various things going on. Speaking, we're speaking almost primarily about the diagnostic end because I keep gravitating towards it, but it, it expands out beyond that. But that, that gap is, unfortunately, there's not a lot the tech themselves are going to be able to do about it because he or she is not probably going to be able to go and purchase a lot of this equipment or service information on their salaries uh, and, and keep maintaining, making ends meet at home. You're speaking volumes to the value of networking and business development groups and open communications and uh, let's stop beating the guy down who's down the street and, and all work together because we say it over and over again, there's enough business for everybody out there, so why should we have to beat each other up and we shouldn't? Unfortunately, it's a, it's a bad part of, of, our, of our industry and we can't talk about it enough, but you know... I love the fact that in your community, and it's small, right? Yes, uh, population about 16,000. Yeah, and, and so, so that means that uh, you know everybody in town. You know, yes. you know everybody who owns a shop. Yep. And uh, for the most part, Matt, uh, you, you're, all, you're all in it together. I, I feel that way. You know, sure, there's, it's, it's very friendly competition, at least on my end. I, I'm not looking to run anyone down. Are you the go-to shop there for, for the tough stuff? Diagnostic wise, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, and, and and so the shop owners and the technicians that are listening, ask yourself that question: Are you the go-to diag shop in town? Yeah, and, and uh, if not, how can you get there? Yeah, and honestly, I want to make sure that 
that isn't like a chest thump on my part. Like, oh, I'm so smart. You know, I'm so good. Yeah, but we're the t- top shot. You're, you're there because you've proven time and time again that you can solve the problem. It's solve the problem or get the equipment to solve the problem. Make that investment. Got and it. Yeah. don't get me wrong. Some of those investments were not <laughs> business savvy. Oh, so they have dust on them. Lots of dust. And they're in the cardboard box underneath the bench in the back of the room. Yes. I bought them for a one-off deal <laughs> and figured like, oh, this might open up the market. And, you know, maybe it will, but spent a lot of money on something to do a single job. Maybe not the most wise thing to do in the grand scheme of things, yeah, but yeah. it also, again, keeps building that reputation. And then some of those tools we do buy, they do open up a market. We corner the market because we have this stuff to do it. And then we have a head start on the knowledge of using it because yeah. not everything works the same. I think we've covered that multiple times yeah, where this scan tool and that scan tool, the interfaces aren't the same or, or the user interface is not the same. One may seem a lot more user intuitive where the other one is almost counterintuitive. You know, you're taking on more of a management role in the company, and it, it's been going on for, what, a couple of years now? Yep. And you've done some really cool things. We, we may not have had a podcast about it, but you've always shared with me some really great things that, uh, uh, that you've done inside the, the shop as far as, you know, technicians pay and, and, and stuff on the counter. But do, do you ever get a phone call from somebody to say, hey, I got a management problem? And actually, lately, within the last year or two, Yes. Give me an idea. Yeah. Just give me one one thing that someone would call you about. Uh, one is how do you afford to buy all this stuff? Uh-huh. Not not me as a, a tech, but as a shop. Like, how could you guys just up and buy this or that? Or how can you have this number of scan tools? How can you have this new piece of equipment, this this balancer, this alignment machine? What? Where do you get the money? Well, that tells you something right there. Yes. Uh, 100%. Or, what, do you, what do you tell them? Or what are you paying some of your guys? And I'm not, I don't think we're paying our guys where we need to yet. Yeah. I, I want to see it higher and more, more benefits, stuff like that. But the reality is, is I tell them what we're paying some of our guys and, you know, their shoulders slump over and we have to talk about profit, which somehow is some dirty word. I don't know when that became a dirty word because I don't know anybody that doesn't operate on profit. Once they learn how to make it, they never want to go back. Right. Isn't it amazing? Amazing. And, and you know, the sh- don't get me off on my tangent on struggling <laughs> shops. You know, this isn't the time or the place for that. Yeah. But w- what else do you tell them? Uh, you know, did you tell them to join a networking group? Do you tell them to get into a development group? Do you tell them to network? See, you? well, one is start attending uh, training expos or expos like Apex. Yeah. Trade shows. Yeah. Start walking the floor. See what's out there. What's this tool? What's this piece of equipment? What are these products? I've never heard of these products before. Or I've heard of these products, but are we using them properly? So there's education involved, and then inevitably you're going to run into other techs, other managers, other shop owners, and now you start the networking and the sympathizing. And, hey, this is what we're doing. Oh, well, we used to do that. We're doing this. And it just steamrolls. Personally at the shop with the phone call, a lot of times it's easy to attack certain glaring deficiencies with the shop you know labor rate's so easy to pick on but when it gets more involved like i want to give you advice that can keep you know the gift that keeps on giving if you will and i apologize to everybody listening this sounds like a an ad what are you gonna say i i tell them to start listening to the podcast (laughs) maybe skip the Matt Bonzo stuff. <laughs> well, thank you. You probably hear enough wow. of that. But so you're saying it could be a solution to, to, to some of their ills. It's a solution, and I'll yeah. tell them stories. Like, you know, I have a story where uh, our service advisor had a day off, and I got to sit. <laughs> I ended up in the service advisor seat and not comfortable there, not used to it. I can run the shop management system just fine, but everything else, keeping all the plates spinning, <laughs> that's not, not my yeah. niche, not, not, not what I'm good at. And I fell back heavily on podcast information that I picked up to get a phone call where a customer wants an estimate over the phone and following, you know, we'll, we'll name drop them, Jeremy O'Neill. Yeah. We're gonna, I, I followed his advice, yeah. stuff he's talked about. 
Do you know what? I have Jeremy coming in tomorrow to do a service advisor role play. Nice. With uh, with two service advisors. So, uh, nice. it, th- thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, we've got three service advisor role plays out there. And you know what? I never really thought that through. Oh, here I am, a temporary fill in vacation person. Go to the podcast, listen to these people and how they've ha- handled these different scenarios and kind of get used up and then, then go do your thing. Yeah, it's just little tidbits and it's stuff you pick up in podcasts that may be not related directly to what they say. So another one was uh, we did a, I think I was in this one, I think it was a town hall about how to pay technicians. Yeah. I, I think it was um, titled $100,000 a year with yep. benefits and yep. all that. And uh, Frank Skandura was in there. Seth. Seth Thorson was in there. But you. Yep. Yeah. And Frank said something that, I mean, hit me like a ton of bricks. Never never occurred to me. It has nothing to do with paying. It has to do with the shop earning. Mm-hmm. But he says something about raising your labor rate on cars older than 25, 30 yeah. years. Yeah, it was like, I think it was 20. Yeah, because yeah. it's not so much the tech spends more time. In our world, he probably will. He or she would spend in more time north. with Corrosion yeah, yeah, in, in the, the north, Rust yeah, Belt. Yeah. Right, exactly. But how about the service advisor's time? Yeah. Trying to track down parts. Yeah, yeah. How, do, how does the shop get compensated for that? And every time you hear somebody tell that story about raising and the reasons that they raised, no one ever blinked. They didn't lose a customer. No. And, and so, yeah, that, that was a very big and profound takeaway. And I've shared that with a lot of people. And they looked at me like, you know, the, the lights went on for them, <laughs> like you. How long is your drive to work? That's 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Well, thanks. Th- thanks for mentioning the podcast. Yeah, I know 600 plus, 650 plus episodes, I think, out there. When I look back at the catalog, man, you know, I'm, I'm honored that you brought it up here on, on this For the Record. Uh, I don't think there's anything that we probably haven't covered yet. I continue to find new and different things like the, the one we did on the cannabis and, you know, and, and testing for drugs. And what's that going to mean to processes and and systems and the HIPAA law and what's that going to mean to testing if someone's test driving a car and yet they're on, uh, you know, recreational or it's yeah, to, even prescription it's, drugs, to it, be it, honest. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a brand new world out there every day coming at us. And I, I felt that we needed to at least start that dialogue. So, yeah, uh, what's this got to do with fixing cars and being a better leader? Everything. Everything. <laughs> we said that in unison. <laughs> Everything. Matt Fonslow, for the record, Carms, thanks for being here. No problem, man. Thank you.